We are looking for stinging nettle. We're gonna harvest a little bit. We'll show you how we do it and what we use it for. Of all the different plants that I'll mess around with that have some medicinal value, my opinion is stinging nettle is one of the one with the most Im impressive and notable medicinal um, use. And that is as a uh, antihistamine. If you're getting an allergic response to something and you drink a cup of stinging nettle tea, it's instant, like boom, you'll have relief. Now it doesn't last real long, maybe about every, about 45 minutes to an hour, but having that in the medicine cabinet, it's got a, it, it, it's just pretty darn useful. And we also have other uses for it. It makes a really nice flavored tea. It just tastes good anyway. And it's got a lot of other nutritional value. And as a cooked green, stinging nettle's one of the best. We'll show you how we pick it, how we harvest it. And uh, we go out one time a year and harvest enough to last us a whole year. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Polo. So this is probably as good a patch as any. And you see these spines under here? This is what gives it its reputation. If you get those spines against your skin, especially if you just barely graze it, they're also on the tips of the leaves. It'll just set you on fire. It makes you feel like your leg's burning. Only lasts about 10 minutes though. And if you just rub a little water on it, it relieves it. So it's not like, it's not as long-term as poison ivy, but it's a lot more intense for the short period of time. It's edible from top to bottom. If I was gonna do cooked greens, I'd probably take pretty much all the leaves off the entire plant. Uh, for our teas, I kind of like just to have the top little bit right here. So this is all we're gonna harvest. We're gonna take the newer, younger growth home and dehydrate it. The sting is something you kind of become immune to once you've been stung with it thousands of times like me. You just kind of ignore it, but when you're harvesting it like this, you definitely want the gloves on. You'll even get some of the of the sting through the gloves. These are leather, but say it goes away pretty quick. Now this plant was called by <laughs> Adam Harrington, was called the healthiest plant in the world. I know there were some old school, I think it was Socrates or Plato, or one of them said that there's two plants in the world that are of universal good for health and, and uh, well-being and uh, one was garlic, which we all know that to have a lot of uh, immune boosting features. Um, but the other one was stinging nettle. So there are two different areas on this plant which will administer the, the famous sting. The stem, and you can see all these little uh, hypodermic needles sticking off of it. And the other is on the edge of the leaves. Now, this is truthfully the one that gets you the most often when you're just walking through the woods because when you graze your leg up against the, the sawtooth on the edge of the leaf, that's where most of the time it'll get you. So when you're walking through patches of this, I kind of do one of these where I'll, I'll try to push it down to the side, but still, those leaves every now and then get you and just light you up. But if you gotta walk through a patch of stinging nettle, that's how you do it right there. Just push them down and just keep on going. You'll reduce the amount of stings by about 90% that way. You're still gonna get bit a few times. There are a few other species of nettles. They're all edible, none of them known to be poisonous. Not all of them sting. I don't know much about the others. I have found by the rivers, I find one that's uh, very similar. This is the stinging nettle I was referring to that grows by the river. I found it on one of my survival trips and I actually got spooked by it at the time because I'd never experienced a non-stinging nettle plant. Well, after reading, I'm very confident now this was a different subspecies and it would have been an edible plant. But since I was out in the middle of nowhere, I did make the decision not to eat that plant at that time. Now reach out to me if you have the ability to identify this plant down to the subspecies. I'd be very curious what this was growing by the river. So you can eat it fresh. You just kind of want to fold it into your mouth carefully. And it's not a bad tasting herb just like that. So this is the absolute workhorse of survival foods. You can find enough of this plant 
alone from here to get you all the way from here to Tennessee or uh, probably all the way across uh, two states in any direction. It supplements other food sources nicely. So if you find some mushrooms, hey, throw them in a pot with stinging nettle. You can cook this into a soup. It makes a really nice broth. It, so when I go on a survival trip, I basically just take salt because I can almost count on having enough stinging nettle and just putting a little salt in it that that alone will get me get me through a, a pretty long uh, survival trip. And just look at all this. This is all stinging nettle through here. Both sides. This is definitely a plant that discourages people from leaving the trail. So a lot of times you will find in the same places you find the stinging nettle, you'll find this plant, which is a wild ginger. Now I don't actually use this plant for a lot, but I might try some things with it this summer. But right now, I'll just show you how to, how to ID it. When you pull it up, you'll definitely see a lot of these rhizome roots kind of growing off of it. And all you gotta do is take it and give this root a little bit of a crush in your hand and smell it. And there's that unmistake unmistakable ginger smell. So, wild ginger. I'm home with the stinging nettle. I'm gonna take uh, an easy approach. We have a clear forecast for the next few days. So I'm gonna spread this uh, out into three different bags and I'm just gonna hang it on the laundry line. It's already starting to wilt. So it's losing its ability to sting. I'm just gonna kind of try to have it real loosely packed in here so it's not matted together. And I think that'll give it enough air so that it won't mold. They bring them one ginger plant. It's gonna get hang up right here next to my yucca leaves. What's up? So this is just what I'm doing to be a little lazy this evening. These will be dried out most of the way uh, in a day or two with the forecast we have. Obviously, if it was going to rain, this wouldn't work. Um, you could always throw this in the dehydrator or on the oven uh, on a real low setting or lay it out on a table uh, where it's just going to get sun uh, for a couple of days. And that you do have to make sure it doesn't blow off, though, if you do it that way. But all kinds of different ways to dry this out. But that's all we're doing right now is we're just letting them dehydrate. So I did finish this off in the oven. We had a little rain come in um, and it was about half dried on the clothesline. So uh, I popped it on the lowest setting in the oven and left it in there for about three hours. And it's nice and dry and crispy. So last two things I need to do here. I need to bag it up to get it packed away for a year. And I need to make a cup. Well, here's the tea on the make. I did sweeten it up a little bit with a little stevia, some chamomile, and some goji berries. That plus the stinging nettle will make a nice tea. That's our finished product. That'll be our tea for the year. And this will be the tea I get to enjoy this evening. That's nice. It's taken us a little while to figure out the recipe, but chamomile, goji berry, and stevia cool. added to anything tastes good. Try it out sometime. Thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, you know what to do. Otherwise, have a great day.